Welcome to the WalterFootball.com podcast. This is episode 288. We're talking about the Cam Newton signing with the Patriots and also the AFC East and NFC East season previews. Joined once again by Jacob Kamaker. Uh, Jacob, how are you? I am very happy. Um, I, I was just telling you right before we got started, uh, Cam Newton signing with the Patriots is both good for me because I don't have to deal with Jared Stidham and also good for me because I actually have two Cam Newton action figures, which are now behind me <laughs> on either side of the shoulders behind my thumbs. Um, so I had plenty of decorations to get ready for this podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, feeling a lot more hopeful than I was when uh, Stidham looked like he was going to be our uh, only option at quarterback this year. Uh, very nice. Um, so yeah, might as well get into it uh, real quick. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit subscribe. That helps us a lot. And also hit the notification bell and thumbs up the video. Uh, all that would be great. And uh, if you know someone who likes football, who is not aware of the podcast or the website, uh, send this link out to them. It'd mean a lot to us. Um, so yeah. So uh, I guess we know uh, that you like the signing. Um, I gave it an A plus on the site. Uh, what grade would you give it? And um, what are your uh, general thoughts on the signing otherwise? Yeah, I probably also would give it an A+. I just think that there's literally no downside to this signing. It's a one-year deal. It's well below the market value for what a former MVP should get. And I know Newton hasn't been at his MVP form in a couple of years at this point because of injuries. But the fact of the matter is that he's still a talented quarterback, and he's only going to be making a max of $7.5 million. Um, Chase Daniel, I believe, is making more this year than Cam Newton, which is absolute insanity. Um and the, the beautiful thing about this contract is if Newton was somehow outplayed by Jarrett Stidham, which I doubt would happen, uh, they can still hold on to him as a high price backup and they don't have to worry about, um, you know, any long term money or overpaying Cam Newton or anything. So I think they've made out well in that regard. Um, I, I just think it was a smart deal overall, waiting out the market and getting him at the right price. And from a talent perspective, Cam Newton is still a very good quarterback when healthy. I know people people kind of forget uh, just how good he is because last year he only appeared in two games and was pretty lousy, but he was dealing with a foot injury that he actually suffered against the Patriots in the preseason. Um, I, I believe that that game was actually in 2018, but in 2019 he re-aggravated that injury. So, um, you know, he's been dealing with that foot for a couple years at this point. Uh, but if you look at him statistically through the, his last 16 games, he actually lines up fairly well with what Tom Brady put out last year. Granted, uh, Newton threw more interceptions and obviously had more rushing yards. Uh, but statistically, they both threw 24 passing touchdowns. They both threw for uh, close to 4,000 passing yards. So you're getting a player who can be statistically similar to Brady. Um, and that's when uh, Newton was at his worst and a little bit injured. And Brady, you know, had his worst, one of the worst years of his career last year. Um, so maybe it's not fair to compare the last 16 games, but I think it's a, a positive sign. Um, and, and just one more thing, I think Newton's mobility is going to add another uh, dimension to this Patriots offense. Because if you look at this team, it's really built to be a run-heavy team. They have a lot of talent at running back, minimal talent at receiver, but a really excellent offensive line, better than anything that Newton had at any point during his time with the Panthers. So I think if that line can keep him healthy and he can just add a little bit to the running game with his legs, whether it's on option plays or uh, designed quarterback runs or bootlegs, I think that's going to really help the Patriots. So I, I think he really transforms this team and they go from a team that I thought may have trouble reaching 500 with Jared Stidham to a team that's legitimately in the mix to be uh, the winner of this division for yet another year. So I absolutely love the move. Yeah, I love it as well. Uh, I gave it an A plus on the site, as I said earlier. Uh, I, like you said, there's no downside. It's seven point five million for one year. If he doesn't work out, they get rid of him, um, and the they can they don't they don't carry the money over into the next off season. That's the only downside, really, and it's not that big of a deal. Uh, the upside is tremendous, though. I mean, we see Newton perform on an MVP level five years ago. Granted, we don't know if he's going to be healthy, and if if he performs like he did last year, and he was. He was uh, pretty poor last year, like you said, against the Rams and the Buccaneers and two losses. Um, and he was clearly injured. Uh, he, you remember, he came into the preseason with a shoulder concern, 
And then he looked good in training camp, and I was very high on him. And then he got his he got his foot injured, um, so that that's that's the reason why he struggled in those two games. So if he if he performs like he did against the Rams and the Buccaneers this year, uh, the Patriots are still going to be around five hundred. Uh, but the the upside is just enormous. Like if he if he's at least like eighty five percent or ninety percent of what he once was during the MVP season, yeah, they they can definitely win the division. They're going to be right there with the Bills. Um, they're definitely going to be ahead of the Jets and the Dolphins, who are still rebuilding. Um, but but if, if Newton is completely healthy and he performs like he did in 2015, which can happen. I mean, he's not that old. I believe he's 31. Uh, so if, if he performs at that level, the Patriots come in the Super Bowl. Like They have a great defense. They have a great offensive line, like you said. I, I believe the running game will improve. I, Sonny Michelle was injured last year. Um, he had a knee coming into the year. Uh, maybe he'll be, be better. Maybe Damian Harris, uh, with some experience, will, will do something. Um they have a, a big weakness, of receiver, like you said, uh, but there are going to be opportunities for them to make a trade. Like I, I, I posted a list uh, on the site. I think AJ Green makes a lot of sense. He's an expiring contract. Um, Odell Beckham, someone else, uh, Will Fuller, like, Keenan Allen, like all these guys have expiring contracts. Uh, not not Beckham, but everyone else. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for the Patriots to trade for him uh, or one of them. Uh, so I, I think I think. Things are much brighter in New England right now than they were with Jairus Stidham. Now, I, I was looking forward to seeing what the, the Patriots have with Stidham because they didn't draft anyone in, in, in the 2020 NFL draft. So I thought, like, um, maybe Belichick knows something. Uh, so I, I'm kind of like, that's the only disappointment I have. But I, I think overall, uh, it's a great move by the Patriots. Yeah, and I don't think we're done with Stidham at this point. Like, I think I think this move also has to do a little bit with how unique this offseason has been. There haven't been camps for Stidham to get together really with his receivers and kind of improve that chemistry, him get coached up. I mean, with the whole pandemic, everything's been shuttered. So I think that Belichick signing Newton now is a kind of a – an him admitting like, okay, maybe Stidham won't be ready this year. And, you know, maybe he thought he could get him ready before the season. Um, but now that we're in July and, you know, Stidham hasn't had any live ramp reps at a Patriots camp, he might be a little skeptical of that. So I think bringing in Newton for that, from that perspective, makes a ton of sense. Um, I, I do love the idea of them trading for a receiver, as you said. Um, Newton actually never really had great receivers in Carolina for most of his time there. He had Steve Smith. Um, he always had one really good receiver, I feel like. Um, Steve Smith, when he was there, did a really good job. Um, then DJ Moore came along, and there was there were some other people kind of in and out in the middle that I'm forgetting. Um, but uh, I think he can make it work with the weapons the Patriots have right now, but I would like to see them get one more Guy, the guy on your list who I think is the most realistic target would be a Marvin Jones type from Detroit um, because their front offices have a great working relationship. And just to throw a couple other names into the uh, mix of some guys who you didn't mention, I could see if uh, Kyle Shanahan is uh, done with Dante Pettis over in uh, San Francisco, I could see the Patriots buying low on him. Maybe a similar thing with Kiki Cutie over in um, – in uh, Houston, um, he'd be kind of a little bit too similar to Edelman, who plays the slot. So he's not an ideal target. and They probably would rather get Fuller. But I think they have a lot of options for what they can do. Um, and pretty much coming into the season, I thought it was going to be the weaknesses were quarterback and receiver. And that like posed a big problem for the team. But if they just have a weakness at receiver, they can get by, especially where Newton has proven uh, that he can get by with weaker receivers in the past. Yeah, he went to the Super Bowl in uh, 2015. Um, he, Kelvin Benjamin was his number one receiver, but Benjamin was was out for the year. So we've seen Newton perform well without uh, top tier receivers, and uh, his mobility obviously is a big part of it. So his health is is obviously going to be huge. Uh, but if the Patriots can get like a Marvin Jones, um, which I, I, I forgot briefly, um, he's another guy with an expiring contract. Uh, like you like you said, the Lions and the Patriots have traded a lot over the years. Uh, so I think that makes a lot of sense. If the line starts slowly, um, if they're out of the playoff mix, I can see, I can see the Patriots making a move for Mar Marvin Jones. and It shouldn't cost too much. Uh, granted, they don't have a third-round pick anymore because of uh, the Bengals' spying incident. But, you know, I, I don't think it, it'll cost more than a fourth-rounder to get Marvin Jones, who has an expiring contract. So, um, yeah, I, I think, like I said, I think things are looking way up for the Patriots right now. So I believe when we did the over-unders, I think you had, you had the Patriots under. Is that correct? Um, that is correct. So I, I, if memory serves correctly, I, I think you had them at seven and nine. I could be wrong, um, ish. Or, or am I? Am I, I think wrong? it was seven and nine, six and ten. I, I had them below five hundred, no matter what. 
Okay, so what what how does that change now? If, if let's just say let's say Newton is about eighty five to ninety percent of what he was in twenty fifteen, like how what would your record for the Patriots be? I I'm much higher on them now. I think probably ten and six is what I'd peg them at because I think Newton just changes the game. He's multi dimensional. He has experience, and I think. Being paired with an offensive mind like Josh McDaniels, I think is going to help him a lot. And again, even though the receiving weapons aren't that great, there's a lot of youth and upside between the tight ends they drafted. And I know Nikhil Harry has his issues and he had trouble separating as a rookie, but if he can use more body control and kind of become a big uh, possession receiver type, um, a little bit like that, uh, Devin Funches, though uh, a bit smaller than him. I could see him at least finding a role because Cam Newton did like throwing to Funches for some time. So um, I, I just think Newton changes the game and he adds like four, th- at least three or four wins to their total. Uh, I just think because he's proven Stidham, the big concern with him was he isn't proven. And even if he has talent going up against a gauntlet of a schedule is going to uh, be difficult for him to adjust to. But Newton's been there. Newton's been to the Super Bowl. He's played really difficult defenses, and he's played in one of the best divisions of the NFL, the NFC South. Um, I know the Buccaneers weren't good for a while, but the Saints, Falcons, and Panthers were all really in the mix the past five to ten years, give or take. So uh, I think going to a weaker division will help him a little bit there too. So I I just love the move, and I think the Patriots now, they should win double-digit games if Cam Newton can be healthy. Yeah, I agree. I have him at eleven and five, uh, so even a little bit more bullish there. Um, and I had I had the Bills at eleven and five as well. Um, the tiebreaker is going to come down to uh, the head-to-head matchups and kind of spoiler alert because I simulate every game. Uh, it'll be out in five days, I believe. Um, I have the Bills sweeping the Patriots right now because I think that the the, the big mismatch in that matchup is the Bills secondary versus the Patriots receivers. I I think that's so enormous because the Bills have one of the best secondaries in the NFL. Uh, The Patriots probably have the worst uh, receiving core in the NFL right now. Newton's legs changed that a little bit, but the Bills have a great athletic defense, uh, so they should be able to take Newton's scrambling away a little bit. I just watched uh, the uh, Ravens-Bills game from last year in Week 14, and that was like a, I believe, 17 to 10 game, or 24, 17 game, something like that, um, where Lamar Jackson was kind of limited because the Bills were able to shut him down, uh, his scrambling down. Um, There was just one big play that Hayden Hurst broke, and that kind of uh, that changed the game completely. Uh, So I think that the Bills have the horses to contain the Patriots right now. That's why I think it's so important for the Patriots to get a good receiver like Marvin and Jones, AJ Green, someone like that. That would really help them a lot in, in that matchup against the Bills. So um, if you want to transition to the Bills, uh, how, 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 do they, uh, how, how do you think they'll do this year? I think the Bills will do pretty well. And I actually agree with, uh, with your assessment that uh, the Bills secondary should allow them to beat the Patriots possibly twice, at least once. So um, I could definitely see that happening. I, I think we saw the Bills really start to grow last year. Sean McDermott's one of the best young coaches in the NFL. He doesn't get the love he deserves because he's more defensive-minded. Uh, but what he's been able to do with that Bills defense is nothing short of spectacular. They really don't have a weakness on that unit. You can point to Josh Norman, who they signed as a free agent. If he's their number two cornerback, might be a little bit of a concern there just because you know he was burnt toast last year um, in Washington. But – you know, he's reuniting with McDermott, who coached him in Carolina. So he should be better and more energized playing for a winning team. Uh, so we'll see if he can uh, bounce back. But pretty much everywhere else, they're in uh, good shape. And they've added some uh, free agents that should help them out. Uh, I know they signed A.J. Klein this offseason, uh, and they drafted A.J. Epinesa. So, uh, and Quentin Jefferson, I think they landed from Seattle, too. That was a, a steal of a deal. So they have a really deep front seven, um, They and they have an excellent – excellent secondary one of the best in the league uh and Tredavious White is up there as one of the best corners in the league him and Stefan Gilmore will be vying for that title so uh I, I think that defense is going to keep them competitive a lot on offense all everything's going to boil down to can Josh Allen take that next step we're entering his third year we saw him improve last year um and you know really up his game a little bit but he's got to improve his accuracy a little bit more um, and just really learn how to exactly how to use his cannon of an arm. I think he's going to get there. Um, I think we saw him uh, endure what was a painful loss to the Houston Texans last year in the playoffs. So I think that'll serve as fuel for him. And by getting Stefan Diggs and uh, just uh, more weapons around him and Dawson Knox entering his second season, um, I, I think he's going to have the weaponry around him to succeed. And if he either plateaus or regresses, then the Bills will have to start thinking about moving on from him. 
Uh, but I think he might be poised to uh, to make the leap and really get to that next level. So I, I like the Bills. Um, I, I think they're probably an 11 and five team, like you have them pegged. Um, I, I think I slightly favor them over the Patriots just because the questions uh, about Newton. But I think it's going to be a really interesting two horse race there uh, this season. Yeah, I think it's definitely a two-horse race. Uh, with Josh Allen, when he came into the NFL, I thought he was a three-year project. And he was he was a little further along last year than I thought. Uh, he improved his completion percentage by six points. Uh, his touchdown-to-interception ratio went from 10 to 12 in 2018 to 20 to 9 last year. Um, and that was without Stephon Diggs. So Stephon Diggs is a big game changer for the Bills. Um, it should open up big lanes uh, for Devin Singletary. Also, Josh Allen's a scrambler. Like there'll be fewer men in the box with uh, Allen threatening the throw to Diggs and John Brown downfield. There's also Cole Beasley. Uh, Dawson Knox, as you said, is going to have more experience. I love Singletary. I think he's going to have a big year. He was injured last year at times. So it took him a while to get going, but he. He really took over in the second half of the year, and that's when the Bills uh, kind of exploded. Like, remember, they won at Dallas. It was a big upset. Uh, they went toe-to-toe with the Ravens. Uh, I thought that was a very close game, except for that one Hayden and play that I mentioned earlier. Um, and the Bills, they had a big lead on the Texans in the playoffs, and they they squandered it. But I think that was a, a good learning experience for them. So I, I think they're going to be a lot better this year. I, I think they're a threat to go to the Super Bowl if if maybe if uh, Patrick Mahomes uh, suffered an injury. I, I just think I just think the Chiefs are just so far ahead of everyone because of Mahomes. But if Mahomes were to go down, or if it's like is uh, like receiving core, like let's just say Tyree Kill and uh, Travis Kelsey get injured. I think there's a chance the Bills could overtake them uh, in the conference. Um, you know, the Colts are still there, obviously, and I still like the Ravens. Uh, but I, I think the Bills are excellent. Uh, I just think that with their defense, I, I talked about earlier, uh, you mentioned Quentin Jefferson and and uh, A.J. Epinesa, and uh, they also signed Mario Addison. Uh, I thought that was a nice addition as well. Like, they're so deep everywhere. Um, maybe maybe a cornerback is not as deep. You mentioned Josh Norman, the third corner. So, that, like, maybe that's a slight weakness. But I, I think overall they're just a great team. So I'm going 11-5. and five. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly how you have to look at them. They're, they're just so rock solid. It's hard to find a real weakness on this team um, unless you put Josh Allen under the microscope. And he gets more flack than I think he deserves to. Um, a lot of people, like, when they bring up like, oh, the Bills would be so good without Josh Allen. I'm like, well, I mean, there are obviously better quarterbacks than Allen, but, um, you know, Allen got them to the playoffs in his second season, and I think he'll have a chance to get them there again. So uh, we'll see how much he can grow. But um, I, I would not be surprised to see him have like a, a breakout campaign, maybe not be like an elite quarterback or anything, but be really above average and have his mobility be a true game changer.